I'm Cheryl Waters. You've got a tune to KEXP listener powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at KEXP.org. Our dear friends Gomez are joining us here in the KEXP studios today, celebrating 20 years since the release of Bring It On. How did 20 years go by? That's crazy. Welcome. So wonderful to see you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Playing tonight at the Showbox here in Seattle and so excited to have you here today. It's Gomez. Take it away. Listening to Gomez live here in the KEXP studios. It's Gomez playing songs from Bring It On. The album turns 20 years old this year, and super fun to have you here today. Thanks a lot. I heard that that song uh, was inspired by a Beck show. Is that oh, true? Yeah. So it was. A, it was. A, we all sort of went on a on a on a day trip from uh, Sheffield. Uh, so Borley and Ben here were at uni in uh, Sheffield, and we all went over to that place. I think, and then we all rode a train over to Manchester to watch Beck play. I wasn't there. You weren't there. I wasn't even in the band oh. at this point. Oh, yeah, Ben so and my had, wife was there. You so. had nothing to do with writing this song then. No, just the vibes. <laughs> they just said, sing, sing along on this. Yeah, sing yeah. Along. Was that That's the Odelay fun. tour? It was, yeah. The guy dancing like a lunatic was Beck, yeah. I think. A good friend of ours, Mark. The reason why it's called Whipping Piccadilly is because a good friend of ours, Mark, who actually, where does Mark live these days? Where does Mark live? Bay Area. Bay Area. Um... So Mark took the string out of his coat and was whipping the floor of, Pic- of Piccadilly Station in Manchester. Wow. So it's, uh, it, he literally whipped Piccadilly. So that's, that's the tale. Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Ben. Yeah. He's a physicist, Mark. <laughs> very, very talented man. 
Don't ever, you know, get drunk with him, though. <laughs> Can't underestimate that, Mark. <laughs> Gomez is live here in the KEXP studios playing songs from Bring It On. Tonight they'll be at the Showbox here in Seattle. We're so delighted to have them playing songs for us here today. Yeah, we're going to play a song for you called Free to Run now.
Oh, that sounds so awesome. We've got Gomez live here in the KEXP studios playing songs from Bring It On. Such a vibrant and diverse album. So much melody in there and just so much fun. And it's an understatement to say how excited the fans are that you are touring on this record. I heard some of the shows just sold out like in minutes. Yeah, yeah. Royal Albert Hall and stuff like that. Crazy things, really, you know. It just seems pure and about the love of music. Um, the record's 20 years old and still so beloved. It must be so rewarding to know that you made something so lasting. Of course, you have many more albums of great music. And are you playing extra long sets um, for these shows, not just the album? Yeah, so we're not. I mean, we. I think we always tended to play a little longer than that. Um, so yeah, we play the album and then we play a bunch of other stuff from all the other records. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's as you'd expect, really. We just get into it and uh, play a bunch of stuff. It's, it's hard, though, because everybody likes different songs. Every night, yeah. every night I meet some fan who's like, <laughs> why didn't you play? I was going to say, everybody's got a favorite Gomez song. It must be a little nuts, people yelling out songs. Yeah, so we, we I don't I think someone put a thing online saying, hey, we're playing the album. What other songs would you like us to play? And, <laughs> but uh, not you. And, and, yeah, and so on Twitter and stuff, we put this. And, and of course, our fans then named every single Gomez song we'd ever written <laughs> over the course of like 150 tweets. It was like, oh, wonderful. How long of a set would that be? <laughs> More than 24 hours, well, maybe. We, we'll do a three or four night stand somewhere eventually, I'm sure. I'd like to be at that show. Um, this award-winning album came out in April of 1998. Um, presumably you started writing it before that. Yeah, I mean, the first recordings are probably from around 1995. Uh, and they're recorded in Ollie's uh, dad's garage and my mum's uh, like living room and, 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 and in Bolly's uh, parents' place um, with Bolly's old four-track machine. In fact, most of the album was recorded on his four-track on his... Was it a Fostex? Was it a Fostex? Four-track? Yeah, Fostex? Yeah, there wasn't really any idea that we were going to be a band or anything. It's just kind of what we did when we got together was <laughs> record and, music. And did you record this yourselves? Because nobody did that mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. Yeah. Now oh. everybody records their own song and throws it up online, but that was not so heard of. Uh, yeah, I guess we were at the vanguard of home recordists, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about that time being in a band and working on that record? I mean, you were just kids. Yeah, I mean, we were just having a laugh. It was just, we would, it was sort of a bigger group of friends and we'd all hang out together and uh, we'd just slip off and go and record a song every now and again and then come back. And that's who we'd play the songs to, so... We'd make the tapes and then just our friends would get copies. And um, that's sort of how accidentally it found its way into the world. And um, it just happened to have a friend who was connected in a certain way. And then before we knew it, everybody else had a copy of the tape. I feel like you were releasing music back then at a breakneck speed as well. Also something you don't see, just one album coming after another. Didn't Liquid Skin just come the very next year? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't stop to think, did we? No, not really. But it's that classic kind of second album thing. You've got all the songs already. Yeah, that's you true. Know, that's that first wave. It gets a little tricky. Like it was kind of the later. same <laughs> session, really. We, were yeah, just, we just much. didn't stop. Yeah. They're two incredible records. Uh, you might remember that scene in High Fidelity where John Cusack says, I can now sell five beta band albums. I had two friends that opened a record store, Sonic Boom, here in Seattle in 1997. They just did it on their credit cards. It was in a little old house down in Fremont. And just so that they could get a lunch break, I used to just sit in for an hour or so. And I used to do that with Bring It On and then Liquid Skin. I'd be like, I can now sell five copies of Bring It On. Um, and that was, the re that was what those records did for me back back in then. That's very nice days. to hear, yeah. They're awesome. And I never, never didn't sell five. <laughs> I mean, those records just, they speak to people and they still do 20 years later. I mean, that has to feel great. The music's timeless. It really does. I mean, particularly like the reactions you get live, you know, and you see these people and what the songs mean to them, you know, as well. It's weird. Oh, you just gave me goosebumps. Yeah, it is. It's hard because we played these songs a lot and we kind of got tired of them <laughs> after a while, you know, but then sort of owning them again now, which is good. That's nice. Well, you talked about how many songs that you wrote, you could just uh, put another record. And that reminds me of, you've done this big reissue now for the 20th anniversary. Yep. It's five discs. I heard, how many unreleased songs on there? On there. 34, <laughs> something like that. Crazy. 36, 34, I don't know, something like that. So Borley went back to the old uh, Fostex 4-track. And where did you find those tapes, Borley? I found them in my dad's um, 
they were in his uh, attic or loft, um, Lezzer's loft, <laughs> and he found a whole bunch of tapes and sent them over to me. And um, yeah, it was interesting. It was, it was interesting to hear that basically the master takes of the album was essentially the very first time we'd get to the end of the song. That was it. We wouldn't. We didn't really stop to try and redo anything. It's like, so, which is the version, the one we finished? The one yeah. we finished is the, the, <laughs> the one that we released. It's a good way of doing things. Yeah. yeah. We never really played live, so we didn't have that thing where you get an audience feedback like, you know, they like that song, they don't. So, yeah, we just stuck with what we liked, I guess. <laughs> Well, whatever you did, it worked. And uh, of course, you've been at it for a long time, uh, a lot of life to be lived in between making music. For a while now, you all have been living all over the place, not together. Did you grow up together or? Yeah, so four of us grew up in the same town. Uh, these, Ollie and he went to the same school. Me and Blackie went to the same school. Uh, Ollie grew up two doors down from me on the same street. I'm number 14, he's number 18. Wow. And then, we all met Big Ben when we all went off to college. And uh, so this, he's from the Midlands. He's kind of, uh, he's, 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 it's like, it's four sailors and a farmer, really, That's right. this band. Sasquatch. <laughs> Sasquatch. <laughs> that would have been a better name for the band. <laughs> <laughs> You'd fit right at home here in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah. But now you're spread out all over the world and it must be fun to get together. And, uh, oh, God, yeah, it's just been a ball, really. It's been a little bit too much fun, to be honest. I mean, look at the state of us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are behaving like teenagers every night. <laughs> well, we thank you so much for coming in. We've been longtime fans. We've been with you on this ride since the very beginning, and we appreciate your generosity all the times that you've played live for KEXP and for coming in today. And uh, you got a couple of... Well, they're all favorites. <laughs> every song on this album is fantastic, so... Uh, what two have you chosen to share with us? Uh, we're going to play 78 Stone Wobble and Tijuana Lady. All right. Take it away. Gomez live on KEXP. <clears throat>
Mm. I hope you never get tired of playing that one. So amazing. Gomez is here in the KEXP studios tonight. They play at the Showbox. And a little birdie tells me you might be working on some new music. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> We're putting our heads together, figuring that out. Yeah. Well, that's super exciting. Well, I hope we can get you to come back in with some new songs in future. We'd love to. Thanks for having us. Thank you all so much again. Thank it's you. Gomez. Bring It On is 20 years old this year. And if they're coming through your town, get out and see them. Tonight, they'll be at the Showbox here in Seattle. You've got it tuned to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.